Hi, this is Jerry and David for ChallengeLifeBetter.com. Today we're looking at memory. We're looking at what it takes to improve memory. And in this particular case, you have something that you want to discuss. Yeah, there's a few items here. The, the question is, how holistically could one improve your memory recall for good? And it says there's a few things here. Let me see what your list says. Okay. Your list says... Okay, there are some things to do to improve memory. Okay, one of them is your health and food. Okay, all right, obviously if you stay healthy, your memory is going to stay a lot sharper. And food can definitely keep you healthy. So let's talk about what keeps you healthy and what doesn't. By the way, do you know why a donut is round with a big hole in it? It's a symbol. It's a symbol. It's a, it's a symbol of zero. Okay? It has absolutely zero nutritional value. It has a hole in there to remind you that there's nothing in, in it at all. And it's just a big, fat, sweet nothing. So remember, when you go to eat a donut, you're going to have to give up something in your body to even digest that donut. It may even be something from your brain, maybe. Uh, who knows? So what would be something that's better than the donut? How about anything, <laughs> virtually? Food that is good for the brain? Things like avocados. Things like raw vegetables, at least three to six helpings a day. Lots of good, fresh, clean water. Those are things that are extremely important. And uh, one of the things that I like to do is I like to juice. People say, well, I throw stuff in the blender. That's not juicing. Juicing is, for those of you who are not familiar with it, taking a number of different vegetables. I'll give you an example. We use, in our green juice, we use some kale or spinach. We use uh, celery, apple, lemon, some uh, dill, and uh, what else? A couple other things. My, my wife generally makes it, so I'm not real familiar with what all goes in it, but it comes out to be a nice glass, about this big, eight ounces, of fresh juice. Now, it's really important to capture all the enzymes that are active in the plant within 20 minutes. So we toast to our health, and within 20 minutes, we drink this uh, material. We do this every day. And I can tell you that one of the things, especially the raw spinach that I, that I put into this, is that in the last seven years, I have had to have my eyes examined four times. Just going in to see if something wrong with my glasses. And there has been, every single time, there's been something wrong with my glasses. The first time, they found my glasses were too strong. So at er, basically, I was 59, thereabouts, maybe 60 at that time. And so they gave me a new pair of glasses. They were weaker. About a year and a half later, I started having headaches. Went in. Again, they gave me glasses that were weaker. This happened three, three times out of four. The fourth time, which happened about three weeks ago, I went in and on some number scale, let's say zero to 100, I had within two tenths of needing new glasses that were weaker. Now, I will attribute every bit of that to the juicing and the use of raw vegetables and proper hydration, proper exercise, and enough sleep. Those things are, are to me, great stress relievers. And uh, 
I think that that is what you do for memory recall. My memory has improved drastically. So much so that in the last seven years, one day, when I was ready to turn 65, I tell people that I didn't know what I didn't know in this field. So I felt like maybe I should do something about it. So I applied for medical school, got in, and three years later, was a naturopathic doctor, which I absolutely am 100% convinced wouldn't have been possible if I hadn't have been feeding the brain properly to allow me to recall all the things I had to recall in order to pass all of the, the classes that were intense, sometimes books this thick that I had to read cover to cover. And uh, it took three years of hard work. I have several college degrees. This, this, was, this was something. And I persevered. So we also have on this list of five things, supplementation, memory supplementation. I use acetylocarnitine, alpha-lipoic, DHE, and CoQ10 primarily in a product that uh, Dave and I call Time Challenger Mitochondrial Support, or as some people will still call it the original formula. And this material has many, many things to improve the quality of the mitochondria that live in the neurons of the brain. Sleep. Why is sleep so important for memory recall? Scientists will tell us that memory that you have during the day is transferred from the frontal cortex to the rest of the brain and we do not know where it goes. I think it's holographically distributed throughout the brain. I have a friend who lost one third of her brain and she virtually recalls everything at this point, although she did not for many, many, many years. Now she's back. It took about 30 years to, to progress back to where everybody recognized her and she recognized everybody else. That's very important. The sleep part of it clears the body of toxins. And if you have toxins floating around in the brain because you, you didn't get enough sleep, you almost have, if you sleep too much, you almost feel like you have a hangover. You sleep too little, your, your muscles hurt and you're full of lactic acid and, and toxins. So here we go. Hydration, why is hydration so important for the brain? If you have thick blood, if you don't drink enough water, if you don't drink six or eight glasses of water a day, the thick blood doesn't move properly through the tiny capillaries, the very, very, very tiny uh, blood supply in the brain to the neurons, and the neurons are starved for oxygen, and you're walking around in a, in a fog. So if you hydrate, you're going to be in better shape. Now, I just said something that I don't believe, and I'll tell you why. I said six to eight glasses of water a day. All right. You always hear, drink eight glasses of water a day, right? You've heard that, that's, right? That's what they always oh, say. everybody tells you, eight glasses of water a day. Okay, you're 100 pounds. The guy that just walked into my clinic two hours ago was 375. Which one are you supposed to drink the, the, the eight glasses of water a day? The little lady at 100 pounds, it's going to float away. The other guy's going to be thirsty. What's the rule? How do you know when you drink enough water? Truth of the matter is, know your weight and you know how much water to drink. If you're 100 pounds, you take half, in any case, no matter what your weight is, take half your weight in ounces. So if you're 100 pounds, you drink 50 ounces. If you're 300, you have to drink uh, half, half of that, or 150 ounces in a single day. And people say, I can't drink that much. I came in with a 64 ounce Coke. And he has three of those a day. Sounds like he knows how to drink that kind of 
amount of fluid, although that's not the right fluid. Okay, what about exercise? Why is exercise so important? Well, it strengthens the heart, it strengthens the circulatory system and the muscles, but mainly the circulatory system and the lymphatic system that takes out toxins, that's the, the garbage crew that takes out the toxins, the lymph system. If you hydrate those properly, they work well. And the exercise makes that possible. So those are my holistic view of how to improve memory. Because if you do all those things, the body will reward you and the brain will reward you by actually working better. So that's my answer to that. Do you have any comment or question? No, it makes sense. I mean, those are all factors associated with, you know, your brain's functionality and allowing it to, to perform better because otherwise, if you don't do those things, it's probably going to have to focus on doing those things for you. So you're almost just helping out its processes or contributing to its overall health by doing that. Absolutely. I'll add one thing that you shouldn't do, and that is alcohol. Uh, people say, well, I just get a little tipsy or whatever. Most people don't understand that that's when the body is actually shutting down. When you are beginning to be inebriated or drunk, uh, the problem tends to be that your body is just giving up because it has so much toxins in the system that the liver can't process it. So the body is beginning to shut down. Now, if you don't believe that, drink enough and the body will shut down completely. You die. So in reality, when you're thoroughly drunk, you are trying to die body is giving up. Now, fortunately, if you stop drinking at some point when you're drunk, you stop drinking. Within a few hours, the liver catches up, processes the toxin, and gets it out of the body. But those who do not end up deceased. So it plays a number on the mitochondria, destroys mitochondria by, by the billions reduces the effectiveness of the brain cells. Now, I'm not saying somebody shouldn't have a glass of wine or, or something like that, but it comes down to what Grandpa has always told you, all things in moderation. So treat it with respect that is due, and your brain will reward you as well. Until the next time, this is Jerry. And David. And we look forward to these opportunities to bring thoughts to you that might improve your life or give you an opportunity to correct something that may be going wrong or just perhaps just avoid a situation where um, it just doesn't work right for you. So until next time, be well. Be well.